Yo, what is up, everybody? It is Noah. I'm coming at you with another episode of Quick Codes, where we take you from zero to hero in blockchain development. In this episode, I am going to teach you how to parse transaction details on the Solana blockchain. Let's hop into it. All right, so here in the code, we've got an empty repository, or not repository, but folder, uh, and this is called, well, it's a little bit too long. You can see, there we go. We're, we're in Solana transaction parsing. Uh, and it's just a completely empty folder. So we're going to need to run a couple commands to get us up and running. So we're going to do npm init dash y. And dash y just essentially says yes to all of the commands that you do upon uh, npm init. Um, and the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to install the at Solana web 3 js library. That's going to let us do all of the JavaScript things that we want to do. And the very last thing is we're just going to touch index.js. And so here you can see we, this is all we need to begin coding. So we'll go ahead and kill the terminal there. And let's go ahead and start coding. So let's see. The first thing is we're going to want to import this. So we'll say Solana Web 3. And this is just going to be a require function, and that'll be at Solana Web 3 JS. If you're in TypeScript, you could also import all of these. Um, and so we've got Solana Web 3, uh, and then we're going to want to make an, a search address, because what we're going to do is we are going to make a function that plugs in a public key, and then you just say, hey, I want to grab this many transactions uh, and log them out to the console. Um, and so to do that, we're going to need a search address. And what I've done here is I just pulled a random active address off the chain. Uh, I think it's actually a, if you are big in the DeFi world, I believe this uh, was owned or is regularly used by some user uh, with the Jupyter uh, DeFi app. The next thing we'll do is we'll add an endpoint. So we'll say const endpoint. Uh, and that will be a string, and you could plug in any endpoint. There's plenty of public infrastructure, but you know, here at Quick Node, we believe in things being fast. So here I've got a mainnet Solana endpoint, and so I just go over to the dashboard and I copy the HTTP provider, and you can see we've got the um, Explorer over there. We'll dive into that in a little bit. And so here you can see that's what your endpoint should look like. Uh, be sure if you are committing any of this uh, code to a project that you are not exposing this as if you have this anyone can take a look at or not take a look at but can use your quick note endpoint so be sure to always keep that nice and secure and the last thing that we'll want to do is we'll create a connection to the solana blockchain so that'll be solana connection and that will just be a new solana web 3 connection and we'll pass in our endpoint right there. Very cool. And so this is all the config that we need to begin our uh, actual function. And so we'll just call this um, const get transactions. And this is going to be an asynchronous function. And it's going to take an address. And it's going to take um, the number of transactions that we want. Uh, we'll just make this a nice arrow function. And in here is where we can start getting to the good stuff. So the first thing that we want to do is create a pub key. Uh, and that is just a structure that your address can take on. And that's what we will want. So we will call this to be a new Solana Web 3. And this will be a public key. And that public key will take in an argument of address. Very cool. And so this will create a public key object for us instead of just that string, essentially, because we, we won't be able to interact with much just using the, the string. This is base58 encoded, uh, and this is kind of like the unserialized version of that. And so what we'll need is we'll need the public key, and we will need a transaction list. Uh, so we'll just call this let transaction list. And here we will do the Solana connection. And what we're going to do is this get signatures for address. And this is essentially the main function that we are using to display all of this information in this uh, little short tutorial. 
So we've got our signature for address and you can see here, it tells us it takes a public key and then a configuration of options. So we'll just say uh, that it takes the pub key and then we'll need an address here. And you can see the signatures for address options. If you are look at the Solana Web3.js docs, it will tell you all of the different things that this object can take. Uh, for us, we're just going to be using the limit, which takes a number. So the number will be our number of transactions. And so this will just limit uh, the amount of transactions that we return whenever we call this get signatures for address. Because by default, I think it returns a, a large number. I want to say it's 100, um, but we're just limiting that a little bit here. And with that, we can now get the signature list. So we'll say let signature list and from there we will call um, a map over our transaction list transaction list and like i said this is a map and for each transaction we want to return the transaction dot signature and so you can see an actual transaction is a rather large object we just want to get the signature for each of this so I know this says get signatures for address, but what it ends up returning is a confirmed signature info, which is a essentially a transaction. And we just want the signature for that transaction. So that's, that's how we do that. And the next thing that we'll do is we'll get the transaction details. Um, so let transaction details, and that's going to be a uh, another call to the blockchain. So that'll be Solana connection. And then what we're going to do is get parsed transactions. And what transactions do we want to get that are all parsed? We want to pass in the signature list. And so here, this will get us all of the parsed transactions. And I'll, I'll show you really quickly what this would look like uh, to show you why exactly we're doing this. So uh, here's the transaction list. Um, and from here, we can just save this. You can see it did a bit of formatting there. That is quite all right. And from here, we can just run a uh, node index. And it would help if we actually called our get transactions function here, if we wanted to see anything. Uh, so let's get transactions and this will take our our search address and let's just get three. Okay, so let's try that again. We'll run node index. And here you can see that we get uh, this essentially like the block information. So it gives us the, the block time. It gives us whether the confirmation status is finalized or pending. And you can see it gives us some instructions uh, and a memo in the signature and the slot that it landed at. So you can see for all of these transaction lists that we are actually getting um, what we are passing in there to actually get the signature. So whenever we call the transaction and then the transaction dot signature, we're just looping through all of the objects and grabbing this key and value right here. And then we are passing that to the get uh, parse transactions. So here, if we move this transaction list uh, and we put it in here and we call this transaction details, you can also see what that looks like. And so here you can see we're getting a lot more information there, whereas before it was just kind of giving us like the very base level of the transaction details. Here it's giving us a lot more. So we're still getting the block time, but we're also getting this meta object uh, and the transaction object that gives us all of the messages that we're going to be looking for in addition to some other uh, relevant details. There's a lot in here that we won't be going into, but there is a wealth of information that is available to you through this get signatures for address and the get parsed transaction calls. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of that console log um, and we can just keep going. And so what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the transaction list, not the transaction details. Uh, we'll call that in a little bit, but so we're going to do transaction list and we'll just call a for each on this because we don't want to return anything inside there. And this will be a callback function. And, and in here, the parameters that we want is we want to grab the transaction and we're also going to grab the index that we are at. 
Okay, and here I'm going to save you a bit of trouble. I'm just going to be doing quite a lot of logging out for each transaction that we go through. So we want to loop through the transaction list uh, that we grabbed. So this is, in our case, we're going to be looping through three. Uh, and each transaction, uh, we're going to grab the date uh, that the block happened at. So we're grabbing the block time times 1,000, passing that into a new date will give us, hey, this is the day uh, approximately that this happened. And then we're going to grab the transaction instructions. And this is where you can see that we have the uh, transaction details coming into play that we did earlier. This we're going to call the transaction details on the specific index. And here in the transaction message, you can see uh, that we're grabbing the message and then we're grabbing the instructions. So this will give us for each transaction all of the instructions that are within it. And then you can see uh, this is just going to make our logging look a little bit nicer. So we'll say, hey, here's transaction one, here's transaction two, here's transaction three. And you can see we just have that plus one since the index starts at zero. And then we grab the signature, we grab the time, and then we will log out the confirmation status. And then since we have the transaction instructions, uh, this is just a big object. And so we want to log that out to look a little bit nicer too. So we will also map through all of the transaction instructions that we grabbed. And we'll do another uh, for each loop on that where we grab the instructions and we grab the number. Uh, again, we can't do I because this is already within scope here. Uh, so we used N. And then we're logging out the program instructions within all of that. And you can see that to grab that is the instruction. So one instruction for each uh, transaction instructions object. We're grabbing the program. And if the program exists, uh, we are logging the instruction program. And if it doesn't exist, we are just logging an empty string. And then we also grab the program ID. And so here, if we save this, you can see uh, let's go ahead and clear that all out and we'll make this nice and big. And so now if we run node index, you can see that we're getting a lot of logging here. And well, for each of these, you can see, all right, uh, here is transaction number one. Uh, here's the signature for it. Uh, the time that it happened, it was July 6th uh, at you know this time in central daylight time. And you can see that for each of the program instructions that we're looping through, so right now we are in this little block of code right here, logging out all of the program instructions. And you can see that, okay, in this transaction, we had four program instructions. Uh, one of them was run by the program ID of compute budget, and then these other three will, were all uh, owned by the Jupyter program. And here you can see that it just does all of these. It looks like all three of these are very similar instructions, um, but we'll actually take a look here. So we'll take uh, this signature right here. And I told you that we were gonna go to the block explorer. And so we'll go over here and we'll just run in uh, and we'll just paste that signature. And you can see, hey, cool. It looks like we got a transaction that has that hash. And look at that, it is July 6th at this time in central daylight time. You can see that the confirmation status is finalized just like our said. And it also has the block number and everything. And here you can see these are fairly complicated transactions. They have uh, 21 account inputs. Um, and so there's a lot going on here and a lot of different tokens. It looks like there's some USDC and some GST. And here you can see the instructions that we logged out. So you can see that we got the compute budget program. And then it looks like we set the token ledger. We swapped it. Uh, and then we did some stuff with the step in stuff. And so here you can see that there's a lot, a lot of information that's all here. Um, and here you can actually see really, really detailed program instructions on like, hey, here's what happened. But you can see that this is essentially that we got. We did number one, two, three, and four. And you can see just like we logged out that there, that's owned by Jupyter. This is owned by Jupyter, and this is owned by Jupyter, and number one is the Compute Budget Program Instruction. Just like you can see here, the Compute Budget Program Instruction, and then three by Jupyter. All right, and so that's what it looks like to dig into the transactions for any particular transaction hash and get the program instructions. I hope this was useful, and I will catch you all in the next video.